If you look at the history of Japan, it's pretty difficult to find a samurai as famous as Miyamoto Musashi. My man is in manga, anime, games, novels, he's massacred 70 men in self-defense, you name it. He was a painter, sculptor, philosopher, and a total badass, making him an amazing candidate for tales such as Takeko Inoue's beautiful manga Vagabond or Eiji Yoshikawa's legendary novel Musashi. Having experienced the former first and fallen in love with Musashi's journey and being unrivaled under the sun, it led me to give other titles with the same characters a chance, and I thought it would be a fun idea to list all of them in case you're looking for great samurai action. Because I'm really sick of them now. And starting off, we obviously have Vagabond. Originally started serialization back in September of 1998, Vagabond primarily recounts the life of legendary samurai Miyamoto Musashi and his quest in becoming unrivaled under the heaven. All the way back from when he was just an unknown country boy who lived in a small village to his legendary duel with Sasaki Kojiro, where it eventually reached an unfortunate hiatus. Going in, I thought the manga is a fully faithful adaptation of the novel, which it kinda is for the first 20 chapters or so, but after that Inoue lets his creativity seep onto the canvas, and while borrowing from both the novels and real life historic events, creates one of the most gripping and heartfelt stories in the whole medium. A reason a ton of fans such as myself love this manga to death other than the absolute immaculate art style of Mr. Inoue is that Vagabond focuses on a lot of other characters besides Musashi. As I said before, Kojiro has a huge presence in the manga, hell, a full 50 chapter backstory is dedicated just to him right in the middle of the story. You get to peek into all the characters' lives, thoughts, fears, and weaknesses which ultimately creates an intimate bond between you and them. As a guy who isn't really a fan of binging shows and manga in general, there were times where I read three or more volumes back to back and loved every second of it. If you've been putting this one off just for the hiatus and hope it will one day return, I'll say give it a chance, every page of it genuinely belongs to an art museum. The little fishes abandoning themselves to the waves, dance and sing and play. But who knows the heart of the sea, a hundred feet down. Who knows its depth. And with that, I finished. Musashi. Honestly, it felt surreal having completed a near 1000 page book after reading it pretty much every day for a month or so. It had been a long time since I had experienced such a grand story. I guess there are Jojo and Yakuza but they are divided into parts, which reminds me that Musashi itself is kinda divided into different segments but you get what I mean. It was a continuous barrage of jaw dropping twists, breathtaking action and amazing storytelling. More than anything, it made me appreciate both Mr. Inoue and Mr. Yoshikawa's works even more than I had initially thought. Before starting a novel, my only exposure to the story had only been the manga, and not only did I thought that Wagabon had been nearing its end, but I thought it was an exact adaptation of Eiji Yoshikawa's work. Well, turns out that although Wagabon has more than 300 chapters plus a few art books and one-shots, Huge parts of the story, like major characters and events, were left out to create a more focused story between Musashi and his rival Kojiro. We witnessed the tales of two men, one having been born out of hatred and the other out of love and seeing them as allies and eventually rivals. And the minor characters, although well written, feel like they solely exist to either assist or hinder our heroes in their journey. Eiji Yoshikawa, on the other hand, takes a more classic approach and paints only Musashi as the righteous hero and Kojiro as the arrogant villain. While in Vagabond we rarely saw character interactions which didn't have anything to do with either Musashi or Kojiro, Yoshikawa delves a lot more into the political side of Japan and tells tales of anarchy and corruption, alongside countless side characters that make the story feel more alive. Inoue recites a single excellent tale while Yoshikawa creates a living, breathing world. Now bear in mind that I have nothing against Vagabond at all, I think there are tons of major changes in the story that ultimately made it a lot more engaging and it's not fair to judge something which is currently unfinished, on top of the fact that creating a manga is a completely different world than writing a novel. All I'm saying is that by picking up the book you'll get a much more comprehensive dive into Musashi's journey but by all means the manga is absolutely fantastic and I advise you to start with that in my opinion. But while we're on the topic of books, we can't possibly continue without mentioning the Book of Five Rings by the Chad himself, Miyamoto Musashi. While it wasn't the masterpiece people were hyping it up to be, I enjoyed quite a lot of it regardless. It's basically all the wisdom Musashi had gathered throughout his life in a dense five chapter book. 
Although people aren't exactly carrying swords around in the 21st century, by applying the same principles of sword fighting or the way of the strategy, as Musashi calls it, to your own life, it could help in some aspects. Musashi talks about a broad range of topics such as finding your true self by meeting and learning from others or giving your all in any situation as not to regret it later, and he explains this by the sword fighting style he himself has created called Ichiryu, where he uses both swords and doesn't leave any withdrawn as he believes in any fight, no matter how weak the opponent, you should treat it as it is your last one. Honestly, it was a really interesting read and it makes sense it's still taught and talked about today. Before we move on to the last section of the video, I have to talk about a film series from the mid 50s that I was surprised to find out has a huge fan base though. The Samurai Trilogy is out here hanging out with the big boys not because I personally like it that much but because of its reputation. It really boosted Toshiro Mifune's popularity at that time and has garnered a lot of praise throughout the years, even from those who may not really care about the original story it's based on. But I care and I have read both Vagabond and the novel so I can safely say it kinda sucks. Well, not really. Let me explain using one of the story moments that really stuck out to me, the farming arc. Both in the manga and the novel, Musashi decides to settle down as a farmer after his fight with the Yoshioka school, to reflect on his actions and just improve himself as a person, thus creating the farming arc, one of the most beloved and well-known stories in fiction. In the movie though, they just rock up to this random village and the director was like, oh yeah, farming, Musashi does that, right? And it just cuts to them cutting down trees? Like, what? Pacing literally doesn't exist in these movies. Now, the main villain in the farming arc is basically nature. Musashi was cold and heartless and no matter how much time he'd spent mastering swordsmanship, he could never conquer the land. Dozens of chapters were spent on him just understanding how he needed other people's cooperation for doing some things and how life is a precious and fragile thing. Seeing him go from this ferocious animal that was ready to kill and be killed to someone begging on his hands and knees for food so that a few people didn't die was absolutely beautiful. It took a long and arduous time for him to finally beat the land and just farm rice. It was exhilarating. So in the movie, Musashi says, yeah, we did it in like a few sentences. It's clear that the writers recognized the most important points in the story, but were unwilling to simply let them go for the sake of creating a more thematically rich movie or a trilogy. And this is only one example of the many arcs the Samurai Trilogy butchers for the sake of cramming everything into it. Now I didn't go into this movie expecting a full 10 out of 10 adaptation of a near 1000 page book, but I expected it to do justice to the story points it tried to tackle. It would have been totally fine for them to skip parts here and there. Hell, a lot of the characters I love such as Inshun, Gonosuke and Shinzo are not in this film and that's fine but it can only do so much with 4-5 to five hours of footage. The same with the village raid afterwards. In the novel, there's this whole segment where Musashi unifies the village folk against the bandits and proves they can survive if they stick together. Here, they just fight with their farm tools, but they didn't do that before, so Musashi's presence motivated them to fight despite him clearly telling them to run away. It's just so confusing. There are also other minor issues like how Toshiro Mifune is supposed to portray a very young samurai in his early 20s in the first two movies, but he was already more than 30 years old when they shot the film and pretty much everyone either looks a lot younger or older than how they are supposed to be. Sword fights are just people swinging their swords around and people just drop and die, it's weird. One thing the movie really nails though is the whole atmosphere of Edo Japan. The aesthetics, the lighting and colors are what carried the film for me, otherwise I wouldn't even have bothered with it. And I guess that's the main reason the Samurai Trilogy is so alive in people's minds today. The thing looks gorgeous.
Now that the actual good titles are out of the way, we can finally get into the funky zone. Gondo Musashi is Musashi with a gun instead of a sword and is really really bad. There are monsters in it for some reason, the sound design is horrendous and the music is jarring. The animation is honestly not bad for the 90s but oh oh no. Honestly, it's pretty amazing how it goes against every single thing about Musashi. He uses guns, in fact, everyone uses guns, and when he indeed does use a sword, it shoots electricity, he gets all fussy when someone brings up Sasaki Kojiro's name while he really admired the guy in real life, he's arrogant, he mildly attacks people, like what? I'm all for a more modern take on Musashi, but this is seriously not it. Musashi no Boken, released in 1990, is the first ever video game featuring Miyamoto Musashi, and what can I say, it's JRPG at its broken finest. It features a lot of familiar faces like Otsu, Manahachi, and Usugi, all living together harmoniously in this light-hearted little town. Musashi also has his grandparents taking care of them. I guess the whole story of him wanting to kill his dad was a bit too much for this kid's game. And he goes on finding bamboo shoots and corns, or at least until I quit the game because of the frustrating random encounters. The opening sounded cool though, I really wanted to meet Kojiro at Gundu Island and see what he was up to. You know, summoning demons and everything, but I would rather shoot myself in the foot than play another NES game based on my favorite stories. The cover is pretty sick though. Yakuza Kenzon is a spin-off of the Yakuza series which if you've been following my channel know that I can't shut up about because where else would you fist fight a bear? I guess Tekken. Shit. That's why I needed to pick this game up and was severely frustrated when I found out they talk in Nihongo with no subtitles. But instead of admitting that my Japanese still sucks, I'm gonna blame the technical issues because honestly those were the major deterrent for me not playing. However, watching a few walkthroughs on YouTube, by the looks of it, it follows the original story pretty damn well. It's just incredible how the perfect Musashi game already exists, but behind both a language barrier and old hardware, making it unreachable to most players. Honestly, I thought by looking at the success of Ghost of Tsushima, Sega would be interested in a remaster of this game, but nope. At least the opening song absolutely fucks, and Daddy Sega please release it along with Yakuzaishin, and bada bing bada boom, that's it. Now bear in mind these all consist of a very small portion of Musashi's actual appearances in fiction. I haven't even talked about his whole campaign in Samurai Warriors, his many guest appearances in fighting games, movies, etc. These were all just what I found interesting and worth talking about when it came to the legendary Miyamoto Musashi. It's time for the usual sentimental closing segment, but honestly, I'm not feeling it with this one. There's a reason why I haven't made a video on each of this specifically, especially Vagabond, and that is because, honestly, there is not much to say. And I don't mean that in a bad way, it's just so rare for you to come across a piece of art that genuinely nails every single thing and it's just perfect. I thought that at least by creating a video on all the appearances of Musashi I could find, I can finally scratch that itch of wanting to have Musashi's face on one of my thumbnails and give you tons of recommendations if you're looking for samurai stuff, which I for one definitely was. Maybe not some of the ones at the end, but still. Thanks for watching.